Okay, can you understand what I'm saying? It doesn't matter. We're going to blank his memory anyway. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome back to my channel. And um, welcome to a book tag. But a book tag that I haven't been tagged in. But I decided to do it because I think it's a really interesting one. It's a good way to look at the year. It was originally created by Adam from a channel called Memento Mori. So I'll link the channel below. And it's the postscript tag. So it's a, like an end of year kind of reflection tag. And it looks at what you've read through the year. What I normally do with tags, one of the things I like doing is having a pile of books and me showing the books. But I haven't got that today for various reasons. So I'll have pictures of the covers as I go along. So, first uh, prompt is what's the largest book that you've read this year? So the largest book I read this year was 672 pages and it was Brandon Sanderson's Final Empire, which I thought was fantastic. Uh, it's the first book I've read by him and I read it quite early in the year actually and it was part of the February fantasy Stories, I think they called it, February Fantasy Stories. I think it's the Brookish Bryants that started that, who, who are now friends of mine, which is awesome. So, hello, Scott and Becky. But in those days, um, I was just going along, and I didn't know them personally in the same way as I do now. So, it's one of the nice things that's happened over the year. Uh, I'll get to that at the end. But uh, The Final Empire is a really good book, and most of the uh, month we were reading short things, and then I had a little bit of space at the end to read something that was more substantial. And obviously there's a lot of fantasy out there that's bigger. So that was 672 pages and it felt like 300. It just flew by. And then the other um, question for the same, well, the other prompt for the same question is uh, what's the book that took you the longest time to read? So that was probably The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. So that took me a little while. And that's partly because it took a good 50 pages to get going before I really locked in. And also there was a few other substan uh, sort of circumstantial things that um, delayed me reading every day. So, okay, the second, um, second prompt is a book that you read outside your comfort zone. So I did that a few times actually this year. But um, I think the, the, the most obvious one, because I liked it so much as well, is when I did the June on the Range, which was Michael K. Vaughan's June Western Challenge, where we read re Westerns. don't normally read Westerns, but I read the Sisters Brothers book, which you can see here, and that was really good. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was very witty. Um, it had rattled along at a nice pace. Really good characterization, and in general, just a really good book. So, uh, yeah, that was a really nice read, and definitely out of my comfort zone, because I don't normally read Westerns. The third prompt is, how many books have you reread? So... I've reread four books this year. So those four books were Alice in Wonderland, um, and soon I'm going to read Through the Looking Glass again. But I read Alice in Wonderland again. Uh, that's like the fifth time I've read it or something. I read Elric of Malnibony by uh, Michael Moorcock, uh, and I want to read a lot of that, all of those Elric books again. But but that was the first time I'd read that since I was a teenager. So a big gap in between. Um, and then I also reread two Harry Housen books, so Death World One, which is really recent, and Technicolor Time Machine as well. Um, the favourite out of those four is very clearly Alice in Wonderland because I absolutely love that book. So uh, the other three were good. Uh, there's no issues about that. But Alice in Wonderland is pretty special. Um, the fourth prompt is a book that you read for the first time that you look forward to rereading. So for that one, um, I think um, there's two really. Um, so I've already mentioned the uh, Blade itself, and I think I will reread that because um, I think once I've read the other two parts of the trilogy, I'll probably read the trilogy again. So I'm looking forward to reading that again because I think you just got to get into the style of it. I think I'll enjoy it a second time, I think. And then also another one that I think I like the second time more is Parable of the Sower by Octavia Butler. So I did enjoy it, um, but it was still a, a difficult read because of the way she writes, I think, the, the prose style. So, again, I think I'll enjoy that more, take more out of it a second time, I think, 
parable of the sower. Definitely recommend it. It's very good. Um, but that was my take on that for uh, when I read that. The uh, fifth prompt is your favourite single short story or novella um, that you've read during the year. So I'm going to go with a Ken Liu story. So um, I keep finding really good Ken Liu stuff. So once I've um, finished what I'm reading at the moment, I'm probably going to try and find one of his novels. But I've read some of his short stories, and I read one this year called Idols, which was actually, hold on, it was in this book. I'm still reading this book. I'm still finishing it. So I've actually got it to, to, to hand. And uh, these stories are really good, actually. Uh, so I'm enjoying the book in general, but the Ken Liu story was especially good. And it was a new take on on robotics that have become part of everyday society and all the different walks of life could be robots, so robot celebrities and all that sort of stuff. And uh, it's really good. Uh, and I think Ken Liu is a really interesting writer. So that was the... Um, my choice for the short story that I read that I like, like, really liked. The sixth prompt is Mass Appeal, a book you liked that you would recommend to loads and loads of people. So for that one, I'm going to go with two books by the same author. So this year, really early this year, I read The Midwich Cuckoos for the first time and I read The Chrysalids for the first time. And I'm a big John Wyndham fan and those were... Uh, two of the last three I needed to read out of this batch of John Wyndham that I, that I read. And I was deliberately reading them close together because I wanted to do a John Wyndham video, which I did do. So that's on my channel. And uh, I think those two books are fantastic and I'd recommend them to anybody. So regardless of whether you're into speculative fiction or science fiction, uh, I think you'll just love it anyway because of the way he writes. So definitely recommend Chrysalids and the Midwich Cuckoos to anybody Um regardless of taste. And then the next um, prompt is similar. It's um, specialised appeal. So a book that you liked that you would have, that, that you don't necessarily think would appeal to everybody that you would recommend to people who would like that kind of thing. Uh, so for that one, I'm going with um, a... Well, an author that I did um, really like, I did a video on him, because it was really strange. I was kind of recommending him while at the same time saying it was really odd and it might not be for everyone. So there's a, a guy called um, Edgar Kerrett and um, he's a, he writes these incredibly short, short stories and they're little vignettes. They're kind of like slices of life with little moments of fancy in them sometimes or quirky humour in it. It's, they're just strange. <laughs> but, I, but I really like them. Uh, and I bought the other, another book by him, uh, Nimrod Flipout, I think it's called. But the first one I read was um, Suddenly a Knock on the Door. And the story, Suddenly a Knock on the Door, I thought was really good. But they're all like, I don't know, some are like five pages, some are two pages. They're really, really short stories. I mean, short stories. Uh, but I, yeah, I like them, but they're not for everyone. So yeah, that's definitely a good example, I think, of something that I couldn't really necessarily recommend to every single person. But if you kind of like what I say in the video about him, because that's kind of why I did the video, then, yeah, you might like that. Um, I'll put a link in the description to the video I did about that. And then uh, the eighth question is reflect on your year as a booktuber. Okay, so um, it's been quite an important year for me as a booktuber, as a co content creator, because I think this has become a really big part of my life. Whereas if you go back a year ago, it was something that I was hoping would become a big part of my life, but I was sort of nipping into it now and again. And I was thinking that if I did like, um, I don't know, two or three videos a month, then I thought I was staying true to what the channel should be doing and that I was providing content or whatever. And now I've got into this habit. It's this almost every three days and I've been doing the 100 album challenge I'm now at the moment doing an advent challenge. So, that's, so every day I'm talking about a book. So I'm putting a lot of stuff out there. I'm also connecting to a lot of people. And there's other booktubes, other content creators that are talking to me on the screen or talking to me privately. Or we've been sharing the screen sometimes. And we've in and I was first thing that uh, sorry, first time this has happened recently, I was co-hosting an event, which was fantastic. 
So the BookTube experience has definitely grown for me. And co-hosting the New Worlds of November uh, event was a really important step for that. And uh, my subscribers have gone up. And that means I've got the community tab, which was great. So I've been using that to um, post about other people's videos as well. And just generally, I'm getting more out of it than I did a year ago. So, so definitely this year has been a really interesting year. And actually, just going right back to the beginning, almost every month up until September, um, I was doing someone's event um, and some sort of readathon. So that hadn't really happened before. So that was a big part of this year. And then I did a video in September saying I needed to rest from the readathons, uh, and then and then you know and end up co-hosting one in November, and in December I've made my own one, which is the Philip K. Dick one, and I'm actually reading this one, Game Players of Titan, which I'm really enjoying, and it's interesting that he's doing things that I've seen other people do since then, and I actually did in my short story book, and I didn't realise that um, he'd done something similar before. I mean, to be fair, it's not necessarily an extremely original idea. So it's, someone would have done it, to be fair. But it's funny reading it, thinking, oh, yeah, um, similar to my story. Um, but, uh, yeah, so so I'm doing the Philip K. Dick thing this month as well. But in general, the, the BookTube experience and YouTube experiences have become much more a part of my life, much more a part of my free time. Um, I'm, 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 I've made genuine friends in a way that uh, they were... They, they, I was making friends before, but I know a lot more about these people now, and I, and it's the, the the friendship is deeper, if you like. So uh, that's a really cool thing. And uh, I've got loads planned for next year. I've got loads of videos actually filmed and scheduled as well that are up on YouTube's cloud waiting to come out as well. Uh, but I know I've got some other stuff that I'll need to read lots of books to do the videos as well. So I've got those things coming up as well. So... And also, oh, the other thing that's been really nice, so a massive um, uh, thank you to Pax Panic for reading my poetry on our channel. That was amazing. And for Michael K. Vaughan for giving me that really lovely review of my novel Out Among the Ice Beacons, which was my first novel. Uh, so, um, and I know Ollie from Criminology, was, Criminology? Um, I know Ollie from Criminology was going to uh, read Out Among the Ice Beacons. I think he's mentioned it in his one of his videos as well. But no, so hugely grateful to those people um, who are also friends as well, which is lovely. Um, and that's been something that's developed over the year. So, so yeah, um, really positive experience. And I'm hoping it will get even even more positive next year. I'm definitely much more comfortable doing this as well, which is cool, because I think it means that it's more like naturally me. You know, it's more like me rather than this sort of nervous guy that you would have seen two years ago doing it. So that's a nice thing. So there we are, the postscript tag, the end of the year. It's the end of the year. Um, so I hope you have a lovely Christmas. I've got these Advent things happening. Um, and on the Christmas Eve one, on the 24th and the 25th, I'm definitely going to uh, give a better Christmas message, uh, although it'll only be a short, but I'll do it quickly. Uh, but in the meantime, I hope you guys do have a lovely holiday and that you manage to see family and that you um, have a good time. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye. Look at Stumble. Yeah.